There's Bo. Hey. Grab a hold of that and help Mark Wayne there. Today, we're going to introduce Bo, which is Digger's son, and he has expressed some interest in what his dad and myself do. Did you get your breakfast before you showed up to work? Yeah. I'm Bo. I'm Digger's stepson. I got married, so try to put a little more extra money on the table and carry on Appalachian heritage. Mark, Digger, Jeff in Las Vegas. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Good Jeff. Good morning. <laughs> Well, Digger, you know, how's the huge pandemic fan of the changed show, your way so of life? This is a big thrill for me. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a handshaker and a hugger, and it's shut me down. <laughs> it, it, this is a tough year. Now, Mark, in terms of uh, economics with supply and demand, especially during the pandemic right now, there's a demand for your moonshine that's just insatiable. But you guys are actually lowering prices during the pandemic. We did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people having hard times financially and, and uh, other ways as well. So we tried to source all the ingredients that we could as cheap as we could early on so we can pass the savings on to, to, uh, to our customers. Uh, you know, we got to all suck it up and go through this together, whatever it takes. And uh, we, we figured that would be our best contribution. And, you know, the whole country needed to catch on to that. People are hurt and don't gouge do the right thing. Now, Digger, I'm not an expert, but is it a bad thing to see water come out of the spigot when you're trying to distill alcohol? Uh, yeah, that's not a good thing in our yeah. world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that ain't that ain't no count at all. No. <laughs> I don't know. We're ready to go. Our mash is heating up. That's just a little tiny hole right there, Hattie boy. Damn spray of water right at the bottom in the seam. We paste that up. There ain't no paste in the world hold that much pressure. Son of a bitch. But that's not the end of the world. Oh, no. This is water coming out here. We see friggin' water coming out the liquor spout. That is the end of the world. Now, Mark, do you have a, a recipe that you cherish that's been passed down in the family from generation to generation? You know, uh... Honestly, they're all good recipes. Uh, and a lot of times it's not so much your recipe, it is your technique. Our, uh, my, my favorite recipe of all that we've done is the rye apple. Uh, it's, and, and I don't, it's not necessarily a family recipe. It's just one that, that Digger and I came up with a long time ago. And it's, it's, it remains my favorite, the rye apple. Well, on that note, the hazelnut rum, I'm a rum fan. I'm a fan of hazelnuts, and it's its a great little libation. Well, Digger, your son has expressed uh, to follow in the family business this season. Uh, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, and the reason being, in my up-and-coming years in our county, the, the old moonshiners that I knew, they were admirable men. They were family men. They did the right thing for the most part. There's always a bad apple in the basket. But, uh, you know, they taught us well, and it's and we're reflecting on that with this pandemic we're facing. When times are hard, you don't hurt people any further. You help them if you can. Well, Digger, I think he needs a pair of overalls. I can't take anyone serious unless, about moonshining unless they wear a pair of overalls. <laughs> Well, he's pretty serious about it. He's serious enough. He's, he's like me. We've worn overalls all our life. I spent 27, nearly 30 years wearing coat and tie to work every day. And when I got home, I was in overalls. They're comfortable. And yeah, they're, they're just a onesie for grown-ups. So there's that. So I'm assuming you both have the most relaxed film crew on television. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, we see to it. Uh, they get a little high strung with us. We know how to tone them down here. Take a drink of this young fella. Yeah, it'll open your eyes. <laughs> I think what you both do is such an American tradition. It's, uh, do you feel you're like caretakers uh, for future generations for this, this art form? Well, you know, I've learned that I'm a lot of things I never thought I would be. I found out a few years ago, I'm a craft distiller. I'm no longer a moonshiner. And I never really, <laughs> I never really appreciated the term moonshiner. Uh, you know, we always called them liquor men, you know, and that, that pretty well told you that that was a man of pretty good moral fiber. Yeah, but there's a romance to the word moonshiner. You know, it evokes history and tradition. Well, it might be romanticized as far as uh, its perception goes anymore. But, uh, 
we had there's a whole lot more work than there is romance in it. You know, it's a uh, when we have it easy compared to our old forefathers in this in this business. And Digger and I, you know, we pay it forward every chance we can. We want to keep the tradition alive. But uh, also, we, we feel that, you know, we've not paid our dues yet. Uh, they have. And uh, we will not disrespect their memory or their honor by, by trying to be silly or do something that's just stupid. And, you know, because we do look, these are people we look up to. Mark Digger, good luck on the new season of Moonshiners. And when you have a chance, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Oh, well, I've not, let's see, it was, it was about six years. And let's see, yeah, six years ago was my last trip. I came home with my liver in a bag of crying. Yeah, so, his, his check liver light was on bad. Well, it was <laughs> blinking bright. Thank you for having us. Hope you enjoyed Hope be, you enjoy this season this year. It should be great. Be sure and tune in Tuesday at eight.